again folks and welcome back to another video and yes this week again we are hitting up my favorite car boot in the world arming hall and spoiler alert we absolutely scored this week so much retro goodness i can't wait to show you guys what i picked up let's get into it hit the music if you've watched the channel for a while, you'll know how much I love this car boot and how much of this collection I see around me I have picked up from this very car boot. So every week I'm super excited to go when the weather and you know just life in general allows it. And boy, this week I picked up some amazing stuff. I cannot wait to jump into it. But before that, I just want to remind all of you folks watching to please subscribe to the channel. It does really help. I put out new videos all the time and every Saturday live at 5. I really want you folks along for my game hunting adventures. So, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Now, let's get to car booting. Yeah. Here we go then, folks. It is bright and early, but it is car boot time. And disclaimer, I was in a pretty bad mood this morning as I had slept pretty badly the night before because, like a kid at Christmas, I couldn't sleep because I was pretty excited about the car boot the next morning. You know, don't judge me. If you haven't got passion, you shouldn't be out there trying to add your game collection. I just love it. And, you know, I am, I'm just a child at heart. But we were straight in. It had rained a little bit on the way to the car boot, which was pretty disappointing and did worry me the entire thing was going to be cancelled. As you can see here, this table was pretty wet. I was pretty tempted by this copy of Guitar Hero Live. I have got it for the Xbox One. I do think these games are going to go up in value but i did hedge my bets it was early doors now this is a car boot store that knows how to drag me in it has all my favorite things xbox controllers link figures space invader stuff and even a star wars figure and yeah the prices were really good on this i couldn't resist that little zelda finger thought that was very very cool as well as a little space invader figure. i'm always looking for little knickknacks to put on my shelf i did also ask about the controller but as i said earlier in the video it had rained this morning which did kind of put me off and you know i this is going to sound really hypocritical later in the video, but I don't very often buy anything electronic at the car boot. That might sound a bit weird now, but trust me, later on, it'll all become clear. So I said at the start of this video, this was a very retro-inspired car boot, and it doesn't get more retro or classic than Biker Mice from Mars. 50p, gotta pick it up. Looking back, I must have been in a pretty bad mood this morning as I did pass up a few things I probably should have picked up, such as this Mario kind of plushy keychain thing. But, you know, I think I was just kind of really looking for the big ticket items, which I did find later in the day. This next store is definitely the definition of having to pick through stuff. There was so much stuff, but I knew there was going to be something cool hidden among there. There was a couple of DS games. There was also this Kylo Ren lightsaber, which if you've been watching the videos for a while, you'll know that nearly every car boot I either pick up or get tempted to pick up a lightsaber. This one didn't quite pass my test of what I think makes for an awesome lightsaber. It's more kind of solid plastic rather than line up and didn't have any sound effects, so I did decide not to pick this one up this time. General Grievous will not approve. So far at the car boot, there had been a very distinct lack of actual games. So it's cool to finally see some 360 games, even though there was nothing too exciting to write home about. Dirt series is always a game I can never remember which ones of the games I have, but I did decide to leave these behind. They're a couple of quid each. Another thing that I think I've looked at a couple of times now is this Destiny strategy guide. I keep getting tempted at it for a fiver, but I'm just not sure. Maybe one day I'll see it another week and should just put the price down ever so slightly. But, you know, maybe I should just bite the bullet and just pay a fiver. You know, it's a decent guide. want to add it into the collection. I've said it once and I'll say it again. I literally think Ubisoft will slap the Assassin's Creed logo on anything and sell it. And this must be one of the most horrific pieces of gaming merchandise I have ever seen. And I think it was two quid. And just for the fact my wife absolutely hates it, I had to have it. The only problem being, though, with grabbing that Assassin's Creed lamp meant I had to carry it around for the rest of the car boot, which definitely gave me some weird looks. I did look at this Xbox 360 controller, but the sticks were no good. But these games, this is what I mean. This is how wet it had become. Games were sticking together. I guess some people must have covered their stalls up and some didn't, but that rain didn't deter me. I was going to push on through the rest of the car boot. 
and my patience paid off on the very next stand where there was this boxed PS1 with loads of peripherals with it as well. I was very, very tempted by this, but it was 25 quid and I had no way of knowing if it was working. So I did pass it up, even though I may regret it down the line. But also on the same stand, they did have some pretty cool retro bits again. So a complete PS1 game, maybe planned, but also these vinyl, which I've I think they're like just basic vinyl pops, but I am quite a fan of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, so I did pick that up for a quid, and also managed to pick up this Monsters Inc. game for the PS1, which was complete. Sadly, it was a platinum label, but a complete PS1 game, and that vinyl figure for two quid, I'm pretty happy with that as a bit of a pickup. You know, it seemed like my luck was definitely getting a little bit better, so I kind of kept going because I knew I was just steps away from something awesome. How much is that one? I was pretty surprised I came to the next door and there was again another retro console. This time the PlayStation 2, but this thing was wet. You can literally see me wiping the water off my hands. It was super cheap, but seriously, a console that damn. What are the chances of that actually surviving like that kind of rain? But yeah, sad to see, but I kept going, pushing through. I like this guy had just a stall of M&Ms. And it was also getting to kind of the start of the car boot, where normally people go in straight away. And I kind of thought, well, that's probably the end of the cool stuff. So I was kind of like, oh, it's been a bit of a disappointing car boot. There's not really been much, but then right near the end of the car boot, I came across this stand. And just looking at it, I knew there was going to be some amazing stuff. The eagle-eyed of you might have spotted at the corner of your eye a very special sum. The first thing I did was jump into the games. I like to kind of get an idea sometimes of how much people are charging for things. And I saw a copy, a couple of these PSP games that were sealed. So I don't like very often pick up sealed games because I mainly want to play my games. But if I can get sealed stuff for a good deal, you know I'm going to pick it up, you know, either to flip or just to keep because it seems like the sealed game market is just crazy at the minute so you know if i'm out there and it's cheap why not just get involved it's not for me but i know a lot of people out there do collect sealed stuff so if i've got the option i might as well pick it up but this stand had some really cool stuff this guy was super sound gave me some really good deals and yeah i was actually blown away by how good his prices were and yeah you're gonna see this deal starts to get a little bit crazy this stand must have had one of the most random selections of stuff I've seen at car boot for absolutely years. There was games for consoles, I just don't really even know what they are. If it goes kind of pre-NES and Mars system, my mind is not that educated on the kind of older stuff. Like it looks like kind of Acorn, BBC, kind of stuff like that. When it gets to cassette games, I'm not as knowledgeable, but it was really cool to see some stuff you just don't see all the time. And I had to have a look at what turned out to be a database games computer. I have no idea what it was, but I liked the artwork. And then behind it was the Sega Pico. This is a pretty rare console. It was not in the greatest of condition of all time. It had no power lead, it had no TV lead, but I was intrigued by it because if you see something you don't see all the time, that is the kind of thing you want to pick up if the price is right. Two quid. That's right, I picked it up for two quid. Like, I don't care if it doesn't work for two quid. I am willing to roll a dice. And I managed to bundle together a few other bits from this stall as well. After this, we did head to another car boot. So if you've seen my previous video, this was the car boot that was the trial by car boot. And it just seems like it hasn't taken off at all. This was the same day and the Arming Hall car boot was pretty busy, but this one was absolutely dead. These vintage games were pretty cool. We did look at his intercom house phone, jokingly said about being able to communicate with the games room, but you know, it had felt like it was going to be a bit of a rubbish day, but in the end, it did end up pretty well. I guess that is just the luck of the car boot. That really was a hell of a ride this week. I really thought this car boot was going to be an absolute write-off, but thankfully, I managed to pick up some amazing bits. It just goes to show you can't give up until the right end of the car boot, as you never know, as we just saw, what we're going to come across. So let's go through those pickups. Let me know in the comments down below if you used to watch Biker Mice from Mars when you were younger, if you still watch because it is an absolute banger of a cartoon. So I knew I just had to pick up this money box. This is going to look really nice on the shelf. 
for just 50p, I think that is a pretty good start to our retro hunting bargains. When you're looking around the car, it's not always the massive items you're looking at. Sometimes it's cool to find little knickknacks to help decorate your games room, such as these two little items which I picked up for just 50p each. First of all, we have this awesome little Space Invaders kind of ornament, it's nice see-through plastic, and this little Link figure, which, correct me if I'm wrong, is from Majora's Mask. And you know, just little bits like this I like to add around the games room, especially when they're just 50p each. Let's get into some of the video games we picked up this week at the car booth. There wasn't tons of stuff there, but I still managed to pick up a few cool bits. First of all, we have these copies of Talkman. So, this is brand new and sealed both of these. I paid a pound for both of these. You know, I don't pick up a lot of sealed games, but when they're cheap, you might as well. So, if you don't know, Talkman includes a microphone in the case. And then what this does, you speak into it using your native tongue, and it translates it into different languages. So, you know, if you're off traveling around the world, using your PSP, you could talk to people in their language. Next up we have Transformers Revenge of the Fallen and when I picked this up I didn't realize that the camera does it justice. You can definitely see it inside how incredibly dirty this game actually was. Like I must have just been kind of grabbing. It is absolutely disgusting so I'm definitely going to have to get a fresh case for this one. I think I picked it up for 50p and you know it's about a pound game in CX so nothing massive. Finally, we have Monsters, Inc. Scare Island for the PlayStation 1. This is complete. It is the platinum copy. But then again, I did pay just a pound for this. So, you know, once again, not the most desirable game in the entire world. But if you can pick up PlayStation 1 games complete in the box for a quid in 2022, kind of rude not to. The final game I picked up this time is Street Hockey for the Atari ST. And the entire reason I picked this up is just, I just love the aesthetic of it. I love kind of the old school look of it. I like the box art. I like the fact it's in a big box. I don't even own an Atari ST, but something about this game just spoke to me. So, and I've never seen in the car, we very rarely see boxed Atari ST games. Had to add it into the collection. I genuinely think this could be one of the worst pieces of gaming merch ever created. It is an absolute abomination and I love it so much just because it's so incredibly awful like imagine getting this as a gift but <laughs> for nothing else every time I look at it it makes me laugh and for that alone it is worth the one pound price tag it turns out this might actually have been the bargain of the day this I'm gonna just say their vinyl master the universe pack with he-man and trapdoor cost me just a pound so these vinyls are made by Funko who we all know make Funko vinyl pops I don't really know why they've made kind of their own competition this thing was just a pound I'm a huge He-Man and Master Universe fan so I decided to pick it up these are selling at the moment on Amazon for well over 20 quid so paying a quid for this could have been the best pickup of the car boot if it were not for our last two items this is definitely one of the weirdest things I've picked up for a while. I'm just a bit of a sucker for these old school computers just because of the artwork, if nothing else. But I'm kind of reaching out to some of you folks watching. If you can help with identify this thing. I know very, very little about it. You know, I can see it's by Voltmace database. It's a games computer. It looks like it takes cartridges and when we open it up, it looks like it's all complete. The box may be falling apart, but this thing looks like it's older than me and you know, it seems to have all the parts in here. It's just very odd controllers. Like, what a strange controller. It seems like it has a joystick and it has all these extra buttons here. But by the looks of things, it does, of course, take cartridges. Now, the problem is I don't have any of these cartridges. I don't really know if I'll be able to test this. But I picked it up super cheap. If for no other reason, it was super intriguing. But... If you know anything about the Video Master Database Games computer, please let me know down in the comments below. Here we have then the final pickup from this week from the car boot, and it is the console that Sega made that time forgot, the Sega Pico. So if you don't know about the history of this console, this was kind of aimed at younger children. So this was kind of a precursor to a tiny tablet, and this thing is a little bit damaged. And essentially you would plug a book into the cartridge slot here, and you would use this electric pen to kind of write in the book. I know very, very little about this. 
And one of the more annoying things about it is it came without any leads. As you can see there, it is a little bit damaged on there. I have no way of knowing if this works until I can get a TV lead for this. So I will be chasing that up. So remember to subscribe and we will see in the next few weeks if this actually works. But at the end of the day, I picked this up for two pounds. It may be a little bit cracked up here and cracked here, but if nothing else for the intrigue and just as an absolute weird curiosity from the car boots for two pounds, this kind of made my week. There we have it then folks, that kind of shows you why you should never give up at the car boots. You never know what is literally round the corner or what you can stumble across. And for me, that is the absolute joy of game hunting and car boots especially. You never know what you're going to get. But remember to hit the subscribe button. We will find out in the next few weeks if that Sega Pico works. And if it does for £2, that is an absolutely amazing pickup. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to leave a like. Subscribe as I put new videos out every Saturday live at 5. As well as bonus content throughout the week. And I don't need to miss it. Thanks for watching once again. And as always, keep playing the game. See you all soon.